Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. So today we're going big. I am going to show you how to make extra large porch signs for your outdoor space. Now we're going to use two different Cricut machines to do this. I'm going to use both my original Cricut Maker and my Cricut Maker 3 that can make long cuts. So I want to show you that no matter what Cricut machine you have, that you can make very large porch signs for your home if you would like. So this video is sponsored by Cricut. However, all projects and opinions are my own. So this version, I'm going to make a stained with permanent vinyl on the top. And we're gonna talk about all those things like sealing and all of that. We'll get into all of that so your signs last a really long time. And this version I did one color, so I could use that cutting feature on the Cricut Maker 3 where I can cut without a mat. And I could cut the vinyl for this huge porch sign that's taller than me all in one cut. This version, super colorful, super fun, and I'll use my just original Cricut Maker on this. Almost any Cricut machine would do this. You could resize it a little bit and even do it on your joy. So this one I use different colors, of course, and just applied them at different times, but still a large porch sign taller than me and I can make it with my Cricut machine. So let's dive in and look at the supplies we're gonna to use to make these. Supplies you're gonna need are Cricut permanent vinyl. So I'm gonna use a one sign, I'm gonna do like a really colorful sign and then I'm gonna use this vinyl in my original maker. And then I'm also gonna make one from permanent vinyl but a really long roll here of smart vinyl and I'm gonna make that in my maker three. Both of these signs you can make in any Cricut machine as long as you, you know, resize them to do that. And then you'll need some transfer tape. And then we're going to need to either paint or stain our signs. I wanted to do them both ways to show, to show you both. So for stain, I always recommend a water-based stain because your vinyl will stick better. So I like this Americana gel stains or Minwax wood finishing cloths. So you can look and see if it says water-based or another trick, like on these wood finishing cloths, it says soap and water cleanup across the front. That means they're water-based. So there's a couple tricks to find those. Then the other one I wanted to paint, and I like using chalk paint when I'm gonna put vinyl on top, it's just my preference. And this is one that I like, so I used it. And then we are going to seal these over the top before we put them outside. My favorite sealer is Minwax Polycrylic. Now this is water-based. Water-based product or sealer going over water-based paint and water-based stain. If you're using oil-based on anything, you'll wanna make sure to get a sealer that's also oil-based. So you don't wanna mix like water-based with oil-based on anything. So that's just one tip on that. All right, so first let's go to design space and let's talk about designing signs and then we'll cut our vinyl for both of the signs on our Cricut machines. All right, so let's talk about designing the signs in Cricut design space. So I have two signs already designed, but we'll talk about both of these. So first of all, the one in black. This is the one I'm gonna cut on the Cricut Maker 3 as one long piece. If you don't have the Cricut Maker 3, you have the option of dividing this into 24 inch pieces. So what it's going to look like, so I've just drawn this white rectangle here and I drew it to the size, approximate size of my board. And that way I could get a look at how this would look on my board. And then for the Cricut Maker 3, I don't have to worry about anything else. So I can cut the black as one long piece and put it on. If I did not have the Cricut Maker 3, how I would make this version of the sign, let's make a copy of this rectangle, put that over there. And I would still leave it at 9.25 because that's how wide my board is. But I would make this 23 and a half which is the maximum that the Cricut Maker or the Cricut Explore Air 2 can cut. And then I would slice this off. So the O and the H, I could cut those together. So I would attach those together. The E and the L, it looks like I could put those together. So I would just make it where I would cut each of the sections and then we would put those together later 
which is what we're gonna do for the other sign. So for this other sign over here, I'm going to just use my Cricut Maker. You could use literally any Cricut machine for either of these, but this one you could definitely, just as it's designed, use any machine. And this is what it's gonna look like once it's on my board. So you can see that there. Um, so for it, I'm using a bunch of different colors. You don't have to use as many colors. You can use whatever colors you would like, but I wanted this one to be super colorful. It's gonna be on a white background. And I made the pieces and design space, the colors I approximately that I'm gonna make it on my sign. Now I'm ready to cut that from my vinyl. So let's talk a bit about how we get these designs. So what I did for the Oh Hello, this O was actually part of an image and I liked the way it looked. So I searched Oh Hello. And so I liked the way the O looked in this, but I didn't really like the way the Hello looked. So I pulled it in and I just used the contour feature to get rid of the Hello. You could do that a bunch of different ways, but I like contour. And now I just have the O. And then these are all text. And in order for text to be vertical like this, you will have to do each one individually. So you can see that each of the text pieces is an individual piece. And then I resized those to fit however I wanted them to fit and located them together. And then when I'm ready to cut, I would pick them all and click attach to cut with my Cricut Maker. Now the summer sign, I and did an image and we can search for hello summer. And this is the one I used. So I used this one, I inserted it, and then I used contour again if I needed to or ungrouped it into each little individual piece and I lined them up to fit the board this time instead of the configuration they were in. So that's how I made each of these signs. So now let's, I am gonna just hide this long rectangle. Um, so you might want it later. Say um, if you cut all your pieces and you come back and you wanna look at how you have them laid out, it might be helpful. So I'm just gonna click the eye to hide it. And that way Cricut Design Space will not try to cut it. So then my first one would be this Oh Hello and I can go ahead and cut that with my Cricut Maker 3. Then once I've cut that out of one piece, I can come back change this to Cricut Maker or any of my, you know, Cricut Explore family. I can, we could just detach that for now. Click make it. Then I can come over here. I can skip these black pieces. So it's putting it on 12 by 24 mats for me, but I've already cut that with my Maker 3 another way. And I'm just going to cut these pieces with my Maker. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of my pieces with both my Maker 3 and my original Maker. And then we'll talk about assembling the sign. All right, so I have that first sign loaded up with the long cut. I have my Maker 3 connected to my computer, and I'm just gonna load my roll of Smart Vinyl. Now this is permanent Smart Vinyl, and if you'll notice, I'm not using the roll holder. So I just wanted to show that you don't have to use the roll holder. You can cut just Smart Vinyl just with the roll on your table. It's gonna feed through it first and measure my roll of material to make sure I have enough and then it's gonna spit that back out before it cuts. And once it's ready to cut, we'll just hit the play button. And just like that, that super long sign is cut and I'm gonna hit this button to unload. will want to cut that this off super straight. So I have this 13 inch paper trimmer and I'm just gonna cut that off. Now I will use my weeding tool and remove all the excess from my design. So now let's cut our other design with our original maker. I have the first color loaded up onto my mat and then I'll just press the C to cut.
Now I'm just gonna remove this and cut the rest of my colors in the same way. So I've been weeding all of my colors for the colorful summer sign. And what I'm also doing is cutting these each really close to the vinyl. So what I wanna do is lay this out on my sign because I didn't have any way to really locate it together. So I'm going to lay these out and sort of tape them into place. And then what I'll probably do is use one piece of transfer tape to transfer each of the popsicles, reuse the same piece of transfer tape as I work my way down the sign. So this one is ready to transfer to our sign. Everything's been cut, weeded, and trimmed around so I can lay it out on the sign. And I'll probably just use some tape to hold it together. So let's look at our longer piece of vinyl for our other sign. So for this one, I thought I would finish weeding on camera because this um, Smart Vinyl is actually way different than the Smart Vinyl for the Joy and I actually like it a lot better. So I thought I would show that it is super easy to weed. So now this whole piece of vinyl is weeded all, what is 60 something inches of it, and it's ready to transfer. So what I'm gonna do for it is add transfer tape down the entire sign and transfer it all as one big piece. So we'll do it a little bit differently than the summer sign. So now this one is ready to transfer to our wood as well. All right, so let's start adding the transfer tape to the end. And I like to just peel away the very end, start at the top of the vinyl and get this as straight as possible up at the top and we'll just sort of grow, go over it with a scraper as we pull from the bottom. So I'm just pulling this off and then we'll just move this roll down as we move down the vinyl piece. So just pull the backing paper, scrape, pull the backing paper, scrape, pull the backing paper and scrape all the way down your huge piece to transfer to your sign. All right, so now I have my board. I did wanna like zoom in, this sign's huge, but I want to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I have ran it over the scraper on the front and the back several times. And what I did is locate this long piece of vinyl two ways. The first way is I left the same amount at the top and the bottom. So I trimmed this sheet on the back, the backing paper, the same distance from the vinyl on both sides. That way I could measure how far it was away on both ends. Then I used, in this case, my H because I knew that the sides would be the same. And I measured how far they were from the edges and I got it the same distance on both sides, as well as I knew that this side was straight. So this side I just cut off with a pair of scissors to save that scrap on the edge, but this side was the original side, so it's straight. So I made sure it was straight all the way down the edge of the sign as well, which is hopefully fairly straight. This is the stained version of the sign, if you can see that. And we're gonna put the white vinyl on it. So what I'm gonna do, I, I'm going to transfer the E, the H, and the O at the top at the same time. So I put two pieces of tape right under the E because this will be my hinged area. So what we're gonna do and is remove the backing paper from this portion, lay it down, and then remove the backing paper from this portion and lay it down. So I have, because this is so long, this portion that I'm gonna leave the backing paper on for now, I have several pieces of tape running down just like this so that it doesn't move during this process. I cut a couple of just small slits here on the ends because this tape wraps around, and then I'm gonna flip the vinyl back for that first portion. Then you just wanna peel this backing paper back from the vinyl on just that portion that you're gonna do first. And then once you get all that vinyl off of there, we're going to trim this backing sheet 
with just a pair of scissors. So I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit more. And now your backing sheet is off for that first half. So this is called the hinge method because we hinged it back and now we're gonna lay it down. So now we'll start laying this down and I just have my scraper and I'm gonna start at the bottom of the E and just slowly work my way up the sign. And now we have everything down to the E onto our sign. So we wanna repeat those same steps, but with the rest of the letters. So we're gonna hinge it from the opposite side to do that. All right, so I started at the opposite end and I'm just peeling this back. So I did wanna show you a trick. So we, you are gonna have to start at the opposite end and sometimes it can get tricky to get the edge of your letter up because I like to peel the backing paper back instead. So if you just kind of crease the backing paper slightly when you get to a letter, the letter should free up. And then you can continue to lift and peel back. And then you'll just get to that E where we were before. And now we can remove this backing paper and we'll repeat the same procedure for laying the vinyl down. So I'm just gonna start here and once again, work this down with the scraper and just move down the sign. And once again, I'll rub over everything before I peel that transfer tape back. I'm just starting on this end, pulling the transfer tape back, just making sure the vinyl is stuck on the sign well. And you can, every once in a while, trim this transfer tape if it's getting too long. And I do like to burnish down just a little bit and then let's put together our other sign and then we'll talk about sealing. All right, let's make our second version of the long porch sign. This one is the one with the individual colors and the placement doesn't matter as much on this. So I'm just gonna transfer each piece individually, but I went ahead and taped them into place so I could get an approximate location because they don't wanna run out of room at the bottom and not have room for like my R or the stick on my R, that type of thing. So I taped each piece into the approximate location where it needs to go. And we're gonna start at the top and start transferring and work our way down. And I will use one piece of transfer tape, probably all the way down unless it runs out of stickiness, which it usually does not. So we'll just start with the hello portion and we'll go ahead and add our transfer tape to it. So we can actually just pull this up Put this right over the top. Burnish down. Then we'll just peel back this backing paper. And then we'll just wanna locate that. So you'll notice I left this taped down so it's still on its backing paper, but that gives me an idea of where that S is gonna end up so that I can locate the hello where it needs to be. We just wanna make sure that this is straight and in the center. Then we'll just burnish this down. Now I will note, so this is the painted version of our sign. I did allow this to dry overnight. So I do have good luck out of the chalk paint even applying vinyl right away, but if you can let it dry for a period of time, it, that is your best option. So I like to let mine dry overnight if I can. If I just can't, I let it dry as long as possible and then add the vinyl. Just be careful on the freshly painted surface 
So you basically just don't want the transfer tape to lift up any of that paint. All right, and then for each piece, we're gonna apply it, burnish down over the top. And then we'll move to our next piece. So for this one, I'm probably just gonna leave my stick down here and let's apply this S. Just add that again, like the placement on these isn't super critical, just so you get it in about the right location and the angle that, whatever angle you would like. And with these larger pieces, I would start at the top and sort of work your way down, getting as little bubbles as possible. Then we'll just peel this back once again. And then what I would probably do for these popsicle sticks, like it's just a super small piece. So I would probably just peel it back just with my fingers and not even use transfer tape. Just put it approximately in the center of each popsicle. So now we just want to repeat that same procedure for every popsicle letter all the way down the sign to complete the sign. So now I've worked my way all the way down the sign. I'm at the end and I'll apply the last popsicle stick. And then once this is applied, I might go over everything, just burnish it down one more time. And then we'll talk about sealing this vinyl. For both the stained and the painted version, I recommend Minwax Polycrylic. Now, that is if you've used a water-based stain like I recommended. If you've used an oil-based stain or paint, you would need a different sealer that's oil-based because this one is water-based. I have the gloss, they have like a satin, I think they might have a matte, whatever finish you like is fine. But what I would recommend is put this vinyl on Vinyl takes about 72 hours to fully bond to the surface you put it on. I would wait 72 hours, then go over it with two to three coats. Three coats would be the best of the polycrylic. And so this product, you'll wanna stir it well, apply a coat in the direction of the wood grain, and it can be recoated in two hours. So it's a really quick dry product. So after two hours, you can just, if you want to lightly sand across the top, and I mean like a 600 grit sandpaper, really, really light, just to rough it up a little bit, clean that off, and then go over the top with another coat, repeat for the third coat. Again, just two hours and it'll be dry enough to recoat. And then after that third coat, you should wait 24 hours before using it or putting it outside. So that is a long time, all those hours that if you add those up. However, if you want the maximum life out of your signs, that's the best way to do it. So let's apply this polycrylic to one of these so you can see how to do it. All right, I do recommend a soft bristle brush for this. And we're gonna stir it again, do not shake. And it does look milky white, but it will dry clear. So then we'll just apply some to our paintbrush and we are going to apply, and I like to apply to the entire sign. So we are going to apply even where there isn't any vinyl. And you just want a nice, even, thin coat across the entire surface. And then we'll wait two hours for this one to dry. So now my porch signs are ready to go. My sealing is complete. So I actually did three coats of sealer I did a coat of sealer, waited a couple hours, 
another coat, waited two more hours, one more coat, and then I've waited 24 hours before I put them outside. So I do recommend those steps in order to get the best results. But now that my port signs are done, let's head outside and take a look at where these are gonna end up. So I hope you liked that look at my porch and decorating with extra large porch signs and maybe got a little bit inspired to decorate your own home with some huge porch signs that may even be bigger than you. So if you don't like how super huge these are, especially with the cost of wood these days, you can size them down. So you just use the same procedure, but resize your images in Cricut Design Space to fit whatever size sign that you pick up and then make your own sign no matter what Cricut machine you have. I think I've showed you enough variety that you can make a porch sign for yourself no matter what. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything we've covered, please feel free, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have Cricut videos every week and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. Thanks y'all and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.